Hello and welcome to section 3.3 on the product and quotient rules for differentiation. In this section, we continue the work of section 3.2, developing differentiation rules for the arithmetic operations on functions. Let's begin with a derivative of products and look at a fundamental application of products, area. Suppose we have a rectangle of width w and length l. The area of the rectangle is the product w times l. How does the area of the rectangle change when the width and the length are changed? Suppose the rectangle starts with measurements 10 by 12, an area of 120 square units. If we increase both sides by 1, the area becomes 143 square units, an increase of 23. A 100 by 120 rectangle has an area of 12,000 square units. And if we increased both sides by 1, the area becomes 12,221 square units, an increase of 221. The rate of change for area with respect to side length depends upon initial conditions. Can we develop a formula which represents the change in area? Suppose that the width is increased by delta w and the length is increased by delta l. The new rectangle has area w plus delta w times l plus delta l. Suppose that both width and length change over time in a differentiable way. We can express both w and l as differentiable functions of time, t. Since area is the product of two functions with respect to time, it is also a function with respect to time. And we can write the average rate of change of area with respect to time as delta a over delta t, an average rate of change. Average becomes instantaneous by taking a limit. So we'll take the limit as the time interval approaches zero. This way, we can calculate the derivative of area with respect to time. Since w and l are differentiable functions on t, their derivative with respect to time, t, exists. Hence, the limit of their average rates of change over time exists. So the derivative of area is the width times the derivative of length plus the length times the derivative of width. When time is zero, there can be no change in width. Therefore, the limit of the change in width as the change in time approaches zero is also zero. We now have the product rule for derivatives. If two functions, f and g, are both differentiable, then the derivative of the product follows the formula f times g prime plus g prime times f. The product rule is not as straightforward as the rules in section 3.2. In particular, the product rule states that the order in which you product and differentiate functions actually does matter. The derivative of the product is not the product of the derivatives. However, the derivative of the product does follow a nice pattern. The derivative of the product is represented by this area diagram. Recall that derivatives represent instantaneous change. The area of the red rectangles represent the instantaneous change in area. The green rectangle isn't counted as its area is infinitesimally small. The product holds for all functions which are themselves the product of two functions. Suppose the manufacturer produces low voltage overhead power lines. The quantity Q in yards of power lines sold is a function of the selling price P in dollars per yard. We can write f of p equals q to represent the relationship between price and quantity sold. The revenue earned for selling at the price p is the price times the quantity sold, which can be represented by the revenue function r of p, which equals p times f of p. Suppose that the manufacturer prices power line at $10 per yard and sells 100,000 yards per week, that is, f of 10 equals 100,000. The manufacturer estimates that f prime of 10 equals negative 9,000. In other words, the instantaneous rate of change in the yard sold per dollar in price is negative 9,000 when the price is $10. The instantaneous rate of change is to lose $9,000 in sales for every dollar that the price is raised. The manufacturer can then use the product rule to estimate the immediate loss in revenue due to a price change. Take the derivative with respect to price P of the revenue R 
using the product rule. R prime equals P times the derivative of F plus the derivative of P times F. So R prime of 10, the instantaneous rate of change in revenue, is positive $10,000 in revenue per dollar in price. If the price is raised by a single cent, then it is estimated that there will be a decrease of 90 yards sold and an estimated revenue increase of $100. The quotient rule says that if functions f and g are differentiable, then the derivative of the quotient of f by g is g times f prime minus f times g prime all over g squared. The quotient rule is more complicated than the product rule in that you need to be aware of the order of operations. For the product rule, f times g prime and g times f prime can be summed in any order as addition is commutative. However, the numerator in the quotient rule cannot be written arbitrarily. The derivative of the top function always appears first. In class, we will practice with both the product and the quotient rules until they aren't so intimidating. You've seen the basics. Now work towards mastery through practice and study.